This lesson is create a web API project and test it using Swagger and Postman. The objectives for this lesson are to create a minimal web API project using VS Code and create a minimal web API project using Visual Studio 2022. We're going to use the open API, Swagger, to test the web API, and we're going to use Postman to test the web API as well. We're finally going to comment the program.cs file so that it's better to read. Let's get started. Let's just start right away with creating the minimal web API project using Visual Studio Code. Bring up Visual Studio Code, go to Terminal, New Terminal, and go to where you're going to create your projects. I'm going to go underneath my D colon samples folder because that's where I'm going to create mine. I'm going to type in .NET new web API. I'm going to tell it to use the minimal. If you don't, it'll actually use the MVC version. I'm also going to tell it I don't want to use HTTPS. Now, if you have a certificate on your local machine and you can use HTTPS, go ahead and do that. I want to create a new project when the new file name is going to be AdventureWorks VS Code API. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. At this point, it's created a folder called AdventureWorks VS Code API. You can see it right there. So let's go over to File, Open Folder. Let's navigate over to our Samples folder. And let's open up that folder. Give it just a second, and then down here in the right corner, it's going to tell you that it needs to restore some missing files. That's just the required assets, C Sharp and things like that, that it needs to bring in. Go ahead and click on Yes, and you're now all set. If you open up the program.cs, you'll see a lot of code in here, but actually, not very much. What's nice about this is this is a ready-to-go application if we choose Run. Start debugging. Once our browser comes up at this specified location, we can type in weather forecast and we get some data back. So this is a sample that's built into the template that was created when we use the .NET new command. Well, that was real easy to create a new web API project using Visual Studio Code. Let's now do the same thing using Visual Studio 2022. Bring up Visual Studio 2022 and click Create a New Project. You want to search for the ASP.NET Core Web API template. You'll find it right here. So make sure you're choosing the Web API template and go ahead and click Next. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call it AdventureWorks Test API. I'd recommend you place the solution and the project in the same directory and then choose your location of wherever you want to put your particular projects. Click Next. The framework, choose .NET 6, .NET 7, or .NET 8 if it's out by the time you're watching this. Make sure you have no authentication type chosen. For now, go ahead and uncheck Configure for HTTPS. We want to uncheck Use Controllers because we want to use minimal APIs. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and uncheck the Enable Open API support. We're going to actually put that back in later. And keep unchecked, do not use top level statements. Go ahead and hit Create. And Visual Studio will now do the rest and create a program.cs file that looks very similar to what we saw when we did Visual Studio Code. And if you go ahead and, and run this, we should get the exact same experience we got when we used Visual Studio Code. Okay, the only difference here is Visual Studio actually goes ahead and bootstraps and figures out, oh, you have one web API in there, and it goes ahead and puts that in for you, so you get to see the data right away. You didn't have to type it in. So far, we've just been using a browser to test our web API call. But let's take a look at Postman. Now, Postman is a free utility. There's also a paid version that will help you test your web APIs. What's nice about Postman is it's a nice graphical interface. You don't have to write any code. It allows you to test gets, posts, put, patch, and delete requests. You can send headers, 
bodies and authorization settings. And like I said, you just download it for free at the sign up, but just go to www.postman.com to grab your free version of Postman. So go ahead and install Postman if you want to. I would highly recommend it. Or unless you have something else, you might be using, uh, what is it, Soap UI or Fiddler. Or those are a couple other tools. But I'm going to be using Postman inside of this course. But let's go ahead and test the web API using Postman. Once you bring up Postman, it should be right here. We're requesting a URL from you. We get that by going to where we ran our application before. You take this, you copy it to the clipboard, and you paste it right in here, and then you go ahead and click on the send. Now, as you can see down here in the response body, this is really nice. It actually takes that JSON and it formats it for you. Okay, so instead of just seeing everything like this, which is a little hard to read, Postman gives you this pretty view of all the data. You can look at the raw data if you want as well. I kind of prefer to see the pretty version. But Postman is a great way to test things out, and we're going to use this periodically throughout the course here, especially when we get to doing things like posts, puts, patches, deletes, things like that. That comes in very handy for doing those. Another way, instead of using Postman, that you can get that same functionality of posts and puts and deletes is to use Swagger and the Open API. Now this is a tool that reads the structure of your APIs and displays a page that actually shows the methods in your API and the parameters for each API. So it'll tell you actually what inputs and outputs are needed. Now you can add this to your project using a NuGet package. So if in Visual Studio 2022, if you're creating a new project, you simply select the Enable Open API Support checkbox and it'll do the rest for you. But let's go ahead and add Open API support in our VS Code project. So the great thing is Microsoft included the Open API with the template that you created when you did the .NET new command. You can see right here, add endpoints API Explorer and add Swagger Gen. And then down here on lines 13 and 14, app.use Swagger, app.use Swagger UI. So that means that this open API is already included. And at the very end down here, and we're going to talk more about this later, but you see on line 35, the dot with open API. That's what generates the documentation. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we do a start debugging here, remember how it just comes up at that URL and then you had to type in weather forecast? Well, instead of typing that in, if you just simply type in swagger, look at that, all built in. What it does is it generates some metadata about the app.mapget, which is the runtime endpoint, right? The route for the get weather forecast. And it says, well, I can display that for you so that I can now click on get and I can try it out and click execute. And then they'll show you the data down here in the response body. So kind of very similar to Postman, right? But this is all done now through the browser. Very neat. With Visual Studio 2022, you might as well have started with the Open API support. So let's go back and create a brand new minimal web API project, but let's add that check for the Open API. Go ahead and click on Create a New Project again. Choose the ASP.NET Core Web API. It should be in your recent project templates. Go ahead and click Next. And let's go ahead and just create a simple AdventureWorks API. Leave everything else the same on this screen. On the following screen, again, uncheck the configure for HTTPS, but this time make sure the enable open API support is chosen. We'll go ahead and create this project now. And again, what's nice about Visual Studio is everything is now just there. It bootstraps the loca starting location and it automatically comes up with Swagger. So here you can see now our Swagger it looks exactly what we saw with Visual Studio Code. And we can click on this, try it out, execute, and we get the data. So definitely want to use the open API support in every project you create. Well, up to this point, we've kind of just done configuration, got our project going. 
and we saw a little bit about this program.cs. Well, this is the starting point for your web API. It inside of here creates a web application builder object, which we use to add and configure the services to run. We add and configure middleware services. It creates a web application object that helps us turn on which middleware services we want. And it runs the application. And it also helps us create our minimal API endpoints. The problem is Microsoft didn't do a very good job of commenting what pieces are which. Let's go ahead and comment this so you'll have a better idea of what each thing does inside of the program.cs. So here's the program.cs file. And you can see up here we create an instance of our web application builder object. But how do you know it's doing that, right? I mean, you just see this line of code. And then we have now at least it commented a little bit about, you know, learn more about Swagger Open API. But then it just does var app equals builder.build, configure the HTTP request pipeline. And then down here we have, well, it looks like a little bit of data there. And then we have this app.map get, which is our minimal API endpoint. And we're going to see examples of this and learn more all about those. Then we see this app.run. And then down here there's this internal record weather forecast. Well, again, to me, not very well commented. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of this. And I'm going to add some comments in here. Here we go. Create a web application builder object to configure how the ASP.NET service runs. Well, that's a little more descriptive. And then look, I've actually given you a comment for an area for you to add and configure services. Then we have our Swagger area. That was already pretty well documented, so I didn't really touch too much on that. Then I said, look at that. After adding and configuring services, create an instance of a web application object. That's what the builder.build does. Then we configure the HTTP request pipeline. And then look, I've got map minimal API routes and endpoints here. Run the application. And then I just had adding additional data below. So this is just a, a forecast uh, record here that they're creating. So just a little bit better version of the program.cs. What's nice about this is it, it kind of tells you where to put things. So again, totally optional. You don't have to do this. This is just something that I really like having in all of my program.cs files. In this lesson, we saw that we can create minimal API projects with either Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio 2022. We really should use Swagger. It makes testing our web APIs much easier. Postman, also a great tool for testing. I actually use that quite a bit. And also you should put some good comments in to your program.cs file because it'll make it a lot easier to understand and kind of helps you out against clues you in of where you're supposed to put things. Coming up next, routes and return types.